Hello everyone, this is Waterfall Joe, and in today's video we're going to be going over my top 10 favorite images of 2023. These aren't in any particular order and they're just some of my favorites. So I'm actually filming this on my brand new Nikon Z30. This is my first video I've shot with it. This is a camera I've been wanting for a long time to help enhance the YouTube channel. It's going to be my main vlogging camera and my Z62 is going to be my main photography camera. So I can't wait to go out on the field and shoot it. But for now we're in the office and let's review some of these pictures. I took this in Milford, Connecticut, photographing the waterfall in Milford. And I just happened to look down and notice this perfect batch of leaves on the ground. I don't really shoot up close photos like this very often. But when I saw this I just knew I, I love the texture and the water drops on it. And uh, it's definitely one of my favorites in terms of the up close and personal detail shots I've taken. So in terms of settings, I took this with my Z62 and the Tamron 24-70. My settings were f14 at a three-fifths of a second at ISO 100. The f14 is very crucial to maximize corner-to-corner uh, -corner sharpness, especially in these up-close and personal shots like this. ISO 100 for the crispiest image. And when you're on a tripod and you have things like this that aren't really moving, it doesn't matter if it takes a minute, a half a second, however long it takes is okay because nothing's really moving in the photo. Next up on the list, this is a photo I took in California back in April of 2023. My girlfriend and I went on a big road trip out to California and just had the time of our lives exploring Death Valley. We went to Big Sur and we also went to Morro Bay. This photo here was actually taken in between Death Valley and Morro Bay. I am not sure what town or I'm not, I'm not sure. I just know that she was driving and I, I, we looked out the window and we saw these gorgeous rolling hills and I knew I had to photograph that. One of my favorite pictures ever is Bliss by Charles O'Rear, better known as the Windows XP wallpaper. And this is by far one of my favorite examples of me trying to replicate that. Of course, no one can replicate it. That, that's a legendary photo, but I just love the, the scale on this photo, like how small the tree looks compared to the hills when the tree is a, it's probably not small by any means. In terms of camera settings, I took this with the Tamron 70 to 200 at 170 millimeters, f6.3, 1 800th of a second at ISO 320. So the most important number here is that 1 800th of a second. We, the car was moving, I was not driving, don't worry. The car was moving and the most important thing is to capture very fast shutter speed unless you'll get motion blur in the photo. Sometimes you want that. I'm a big fan of slow shutter, but in this example we were driving and I wanted to capture the hill so you had to crank up that shutter speed a little bit. This photo on our list is another photo from our trip to California. This is Mickway Falls in Big Sur. It is one of few waterfalls I know of that drains directly into the ocean. This was, one, this was such a special place for us. We uh, spent the night up the street camping. I can't remember the state park we stayed at, but we camped right up the street. And this was a spot that we had to visit. As a waterfall enthusiast, this was a must have. We got there and part of the trail was closed due to landslides and erosion. But when we got there, there was a big group of people and we, st we got there an hour before sunset and I wanted to stay all the way past sunset because I wanted, to, I wanted to see with that golden glow on it like you can see here. Let's talk about camera settings. So this was taken with the Tamron 24-70. So F22 is the most important part here because that we cranked up that aperture to slow down the shutter speed. And ISO 50, we dropped the ISO very low to get that super long exposure effect. So for the next image on the list, we're jumping back here to Connecticut and this looks very recent. We just got a ton of snow here. I can't wait to go out. It's very icy right now, so I'm, I'm staying in for now. But this is Milford, Connecticut. And funny enough, that leaf image that I referenced was taken five feet from this one, just in a different time of year. So this is probably the most famous photo you can take in Milford, Connecticut of the waterfall in the church. And this was taken last February after the only real snow we got here in Connecticut. Luckily I work right down the street from this so I was able to take my camera and get the photos and still get into work safely. Uh, the next day it was all melted though. So this was a pretty fun experience. I call this my postcard from Milford. In terms of settings, I used my Tamron 17 to 35, and I was at f16 for two fifths of a second at ISO 100. You might see a trend here of ISO 100. That is my favorite ISO, especially if you're doing landscapes and you have plenty of light. ISO 100 gives you such a clean image versus a higher ISO. 
I also use the polarizer and the neutral density filter to help slow down that water a little bit more and re reduce the glaring effect on it. So this waterfall here is one of my favorites in Connecticut and I'm so sad to report that there is a humongous log that now blocks this for perspective. I took this in March of 2023 and not even a year later you cannot even see it from this vantage point anymore. Uh, I hope that enough rain comes through and washes it all away again and we can see the waterfall from this perspective. This waterfall is so special and I just love I just love this place. If you're ever in Connecticut, add this one to your list of places to see. This is my first time here and I really love the moss on all of the rocks. This was taken in March so of course everything was dead but there was still so much greenery here. It, it was such a special place. This was also after a pretty good rainfall. If you go here and it hasn't rained in a while, you won't see much of a waterfall at all. And I also just love that this one really felt like it was in the middle of nowhere. Um, if you ever go here during the, uh, the spring and everything's green, it really feels like something out of like Jurassic Park. So in terms of camera settings, I was at F9, 1.3 seconds at ISO 160. So this is where you can debate about how long an exposure is correct. For me, I didn't want to go too long because I still wanted to get a little bit of texture in that water. And I didn't want to go too short because I still wanted the silkiness. So if you, if you look down in the creek, you can still see some of the silkiness of the creek, of the water in the creek there. And especially on the waterfall, you can still see some of the silkiness. And that's where it's all about balancing your shutter speed. So this image here was taken, of course, in California. There is nowhere like this here in Connecticut. This was taken in California at Death Valley National Park at the sand dunes there. This was a fun image and uh, I'll get to some of the more backstory in the next couple photos when I show you some more Death Valley images. But this one was so special. We were shooting Milky Way all night and we wanted to shoot the Milky Way at the sand dunes. And we were driving from Badwater Basin to the sand dunes and we didn't realize by the time we got to the sand dunes the sun was going to be up. So here we were ready to shoot Milky Way and we get to the sand dunes and the sun is starting to rise. And of course as a landscape photographer you just have to roll with the punches and, and go with whatever happens. So we had so much fun shooting sunrise here and I was, at, we, I was actually shooting the scene and I didn't even realize that a, another photographer had walked into the photo until I, I looked back because this photo doesn't really do justice as to how massive this place is. These sand dunes are huge and it's just, it, it just goes on forever. So this photo was taken at F9 ISO 100 at 1 100th of a second with my Tamron 70 to 200 millimeter. All right, so I know I said there wasn't a particular order to any of these photos, but if I had to pick my favorite of the year, this one is definitely a top three contender for me. This is the Milky Way over Trona Pinnacles in California. So this was an absolutely spectacular evening, and we actually timed our trip to California around the new moon. I know how photography of, of us. We saw the Milky Way at Death Valley, and then the next evening we drove to Trona Pinnacles and we also saw the Milky Way there. So whenever you go to see the Milky Way in April in this part of California, the Milky Way didn't rise until 2 or 3 in the morning. So we got there, we photographed sunset and then we actually fell asleep in the van for a few hours and then we woke up at 1 or 2 in the morning to photograph. And you can actually see in the bottom left of this there's a light and that is actually the lights from inside the van. We were actually getting our shoes and socks on, we were ready to go out there and, and photograph. And at Trona Pinnacles, this is a photo from the parking lot at Trona Pinnacles. It was spectacular. So this is a nine image panorama. Let's talk camera settings. This was at f2.8, 20 seconds, ISO 6400. And this was taken on my Tamron 17 to 35 millimeter at f2.8. So this is actually, I believe, nine images shot vertically and then stacked together using Lightroom and Photoshop to give you that panorama experience. We went to California almost specifically for Milky Way photography. We were also going to go to Sequoia, but unfortunately it was under about 16 feet of snow, so we were unable to go. But this is, this is one of my favorite images of the year and one of my favorite Milky Way photos I've ever taken. And we just don't get light light, we just don't get dark skies like that out here in Connecticut. So this was such a special moment for us. Jumping back to Connecticut, this was a photo I took only a few months ago actually at Wadsworth Falls State Park. And Wadsworth Falls State Park is probably my favorite local waterfall. It's only 25 minutes from my house and it's a river so it's a very reliable dependent waterfall. I was actually teaching a photography workshop. This was my first one I ever taught and I was teaching people how to photograph the waterfall and it was a blast. It was such a good experience and for me it was such a great learning experience as well. Toward the end of the workshop 
I stuck around because of course I, I love photographing. Well, I could do that all day of my life. So I was actually about to leave and these two ladies showed up with their horses and stood by the waterfall completely unprompted. I was actually further away so I actually ran down to this vantage point to get this photo and I bet those ladies were like what is this guy doing but this was the result of it and I'm very proud of this photo because this is something that we just experience as landscape photographers sometimes just magical moments occur and you have to be there with your camera ready to go or you may never get that opportunity again this was taken on my Tamron 70 to 200 millimeter I took this at f10 1 6th of a second at ISO 100 this photo was a little tricky because we have two opposing forces here that you have to balance out. So what I mean by that is for waterfall photography, you want a longer exposure to get the silkiness of the waterfall. But we also have people and horses in this photo and I can't take too long or they're going to be a giant blur. I ended up settling on one sixth of a second to still give me that silky water effect while still maintaining the stillness of the people and horses anything longer than that the horses might have moved and they might have become a blur so I'm very proud of this one and it's uh, out of all of the bunch this is the most sporadic image of them all this photo here was taken at Watkins Glen State Park in New York which is of course known for the incredible gorge there the Glen the waterfalls and of course the famous Rainbow Falls image that everyone has seen and probably taken my girlfriend and I visited the Finger Lakes of New York in October of 2023 and this was the pinnacle of our trip. This was the highlight. We had to see it. So we went there, at, we got there at 7 or 8 in the morning before it really was busy, which was perfect. I had a lot more fun photographing this and the other, other uh, spots of that park because Rainbow Falls is kind of where everyone went to shoot and we did photograph it. Um, I'll see if I decide to put it on the screen or not. We did photograph it and it's beautiful just it's a little overrated in my opinion pretty much everyone's photographed that and I don't think I am I don't think I'm capable enough of creating a new vantage point or a new perspective of that one and I would rather spend my time photographing other parts of the park that maybe don't get as much of attention and this is one of my favorites this is only maybe five min a five minute walk up the stream from the famous Rainbow Falls image but to me this one's just so much more special to my opinion because I created this and it's not something I saw on the internet. I took this at f6.3, 1.6 seconds at ISO 100 on my Tamron 24-70. So this is Westfield Falls here in Connecticut. This one's only about 10 minutes away from Wadsworth Falls. So if you're on a Connecticut waterfall tour, check them out. This waterfall has the unfortunate placement of being directly next to Interstate 91 which means it gets vandalized, graffiti, trash, the whole nine yards. People are horrible and I wish I was a billionaire or a millionaire so I could buy this land and turn it into a park to preserve it. So this image here was taken back in April after a very good rain with the spring green and I did my absolute best to position it to where you didn't see any graffiti or vandalism in the photo. Just to the right of this is where the graffiti is and honestly I haven't been there since April. There's probably more of it because people are horrible. I wish they would preserve this park. I wish the town that owns this land would preserve this park. It is such a beautiful waterfall. It's a shame that people continue to destroy it. I took this at f7.1 at two and a half seconds at ISO 200 on my Tamron 24-70. Thanks for tuning in everyone. I hope you enjoyed it and let me know if you have any thoughts or comments down in the comments below. I'll look forward to seeing you guys in the next one. I think in the next few weeks I'm going to go out and photograph with my Z30, do some vlogging, and I just have some video ideas I'd like to do. The weather hasn't really been much on my side lately. I want to go out, but every time it's either snowing or the roads are icy, and I just, I just want to be very careful out there with my equipment and myself. So let me know what you guys think. Thank you so much, and I'll see you in the next one.